Hello, and welcome back to Quick Tips for the Sterile Processing Department. My name is Adam Okada, Clinical Education Specialist with Healthmark Industries. And today we're going to be covering what is kind of a controversial subject in the sterile processing industry, and that's paper count sheets inside of our steam sterilizer, and more specifically inside of our instrument trays. So we'll go through a little bit of the history and what is best practice for having count sheets inside our trays. First, let's get into what is a count sheet. For us in sterile processing, that is a list of instrumentation that we use to make sure that we have a complete set and the OR has everything they need inside of the case. But why the count sheet is really needed has to do with the OR. And a lot of times the OR was having retained surgical items like you see on the screen. And this was a major issue in the industry because first of all, it was getting in the news and you can see the pictures here are kind of scary looking. And a lot of people would take a look at these pictures and say, how in the world are they leaving instruments behind in patients? It's kind of hard to look at the pictures and not think that. But the reason was because there really was no way of doing a count at the beginning of the case and at the end. So now what the OR does is they do a procedure at the end of the case and they make sure that they have all the instruments and all of the supplies like sponges and things like that at the end of the case and make sure that nothing was left behind inside of the patient. And that really is why the count sheet is so necessary. Now the controversy in sterile processing surrounding uh, count sheets has to do with the paper and the ink. Now there are no instructions for use for paper and ink. They come from office suppliers who probably have no idea the way that we're using this and really probably wouldn't have a way to validate uh, paper and ink inside of a steam sterilizer anyway. So that's where the controversy comes in because we've been told in sterile processing, if there's not IFUs, we really should not be running these things. Now, again, this is what we'd see previously when we had ink and paper count sheets that would sit on top of instruments or underneath instruments. We would see this ink transfer. And at some point, somebody took a look at this ink transfer and said, you know, I don't know if this is really safe for patients to have this kind of ink transfer. And in 2009, there's a lot more history that goes into, uh, it goes actually back into the 90s surrounding paper and ink and in, inside of trays. But in 2009, there was an article written in the AORN journal that really highlighted this called Steam Sterilization and Internal Count Sheets Assessing the Potential for Cytotoxicity. And I want to highlight this one section and kind of blow it up for you. AORN recommends to CS managers only medical products for which steam sterilization has been validated to be safe and efficacious be placed in the steam sterilizer. Essentially saying if there's not IFUs, we really need to think about whether this is okay. And then valuation processes should be implemented to weigh the risks and benefits of placing a non-validated product in the instrument trays against the concerns for inventory control and instrument count procedures. At this time, placing pre-printed count sheets into steam sterilized instrument sets needs to be an individual decision for each healthcare organization. So if you read kind of through the lines there, what they're saying is there's a risk evolved with paper and count sheets, but they're also recognizing there's a risk with not having count sheets in the sets at all. So again, we need to have these count sheets be something that's decided upon at the organizational level. Now to further complicate this, uh, IFUs will sometimes come into play as well. So this is from a rigid container manufacturer. It says the manufacturer does not validate containers with paper count sheets containing ink users to process count sheets according to their facilities protocol. Now, some people might take this and, and look at this and say, well, we're not allowed to run paper count sheets inside of this rigid container. And that's not exactly true. Just because the manufacturer didn't validate it doesn't mean it's not allowed. The other things they don't validate, they don't know your configuration of your orthopedic tray and whether you have three mallets in your tray or heavy dense metal mass, they didn't validate one manufacturer's laparoscopic instruments and a different manufacturer's uh, stainless steel instruments. There's no way they could validate every single combination of things uh, that exists. So essentially what they're telling you is, look, we didn't test our rigid containers with paper count sheets containing ink, and you should process it according to what you feel is best practice at your facility. Very similar to what the AORN article was talking about too. But the combination of these things, the article, uh, other things that have happened and the IFUs, really caused everybody into a panic and everybody started saying things like, oh, we're not allowed to run the paper count sheets inside of our trays. And even in 2023, I still hear people saying that you're not allowed to run paper count sheets inside of trays. And that is not exactly true. So there are a lot of products in the industry and here's some of Healthmark's uh, products that we sell to uh, try to solve this issue. Now, 
You can have uh, an external count sheet holder, or you can have one that is internal, like the medical grade paper bag there in the center. What, having talked to a lot of scrub techs in my career, a lot of them will tell me that they prefer to have the count sheets on the inside of the tray. First of all, it's a safety and security thing. They wanna know that this count sheet goes to this specific tray. And when it's on the external part, it could be switched out. Somebody could change it out. They also like to have it sterile so that they can actually handle it with their aseptic technique on the sterile field. So there's a couple of reasons why they like the internal count sheet. And again, this is just from me talking to scrub techs. Uh, but there are different examples of things that we can do to run count sheets in a way to try to minimize ink transfer. Now, there's some studies that have been done also. This is a study that was done by SPS Medical. It's a cytotoxicity test report. And if you can see there, the sample is a count sheet with 100% ink coverage inside of a Healthmark paper bag. And when you run the count sheet inside of the paper bag, I'm going to highlight this section and blow it up for you. The test sample passed and is considered non-toxic meaning that the ink did not transfer through that medical grade paper bag. So the instrument that had the ink on it wouldn't be a problem because again, the ink would have no way of getting to the instrument through the paper bag. This is another internal study that was done by Healthmark, uh, validation for use in a wrap tray or rigid container having to do with our paper bags. And again, negative for growth, penetrable to steam, putting the count sheet in the paper bag prevented that ink transfer and that, that worry that was in the AORN article about cytotoxicity. More best practice articles that we see in the industry. This is from a CIS uh, lesson plan from 2015 in the old Communique magazine, which is now Process. But it says, some experts recommend that CS technicians in facilities where count sheets are placed inside trays should minimize the potential for ink transfer and paper or ink contact with patients. And this can be accomplished by placing the count sheet inside a medical grade paper bag validated for use in a sterilizer. It goes on to state before deciding where to place the instrument count sheet, facility personnel should analyze all possibilities and make a decision that is best on, on what based on what is best for staff and patients. And again, this is kind of being echoed throughout the article, right? We're seeing the same thing. We, we know that there's potential for risk. We want to do what's best for patients and we try to get to the best possible solution. We know the issue is that we need count sheets, retain surgical items is a real thing and a real risk. They've got to be able to have something to do a count at the end of the case to make sure they didn't leave anything behind. Count sheets and ink are not validated. We know they don't have IFUs. They're coming from office suppliers. And using the paper bags means there's no ink transfer. So really what it comes down to is we need to do critical thinking. We have to weigh the risks of a retained surgical item against the risks of ink and count sheets inside of our trays. So my recommendation, and anytime anybody asks me what we should do about paper count sheets, I always recommend to do a risk assessment. A risk assessment can weigh the risks of one task, retain surgical items, against the risk of paper and ink and count sheets inside of our trays. Now, to my knowledge, I have never heard of a patient uh, outbreak or an infection having to do with paper or ink inside of a tray. I've just never heard of that. But that would be the risk assessment that you'd want to do. What is the risk of one thing? What is the risk of another? And you want to do what's best for patients. Now, best practice, what is the ideal situation? I think if the OR would use our tracking software to actually, you know, we complete the instrument count in SPD through the tracking software, and then the OR would use that same tracking software to do their count in the OR, thus eliminating the need for paper and ink and count sheets altogether. I think this would be absolutely the best scenario. In the real world, we know the OR is unlikely to do this practice because it's going to be hard for them to get trained on the software. It's going to be hard for them to get up to speed on how to do this. It may take a little bit longer to do the instrument count in the OR through that tracking system than it does with the paper. So we know that even though this would probably be a future state or a best practice that we would want to shoot for, it may not happen right now. We may be stuck with paper count sheets for a little while. So I think the issue really has to do with we want to do what's best for patients. We always want to do that in sterile processing. And the, the panic surrounding count sheets really has to do with we want to be safe. We want to make sure our patients are not at risk. So if we need paper count sheets to be inside of our trays, placing them in paper bags, medical grade paper bags that have been validated for use in the steam sterilizer is safer than just putting them in the set and having that cytotoxic risk of the ink transfer. So I want to say here's my references. I do want to say thank you for watching this video. Um, thank you for being dedicated to industry best practice. 
Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them in the comments below and we'll get to them. And please, if you got something out of this video, like and subscribe to the Health Mark Education Channel. There are so many different resources for you on our education channel. We wanna make sure we get this to as many people as we possibly can. So share this with colleagues, coworkers, and we'll see you on the next quick tips.